America has developed a new religion, and the religion is its faith that uh, human progress and technological innovation are the same thing, and that paradise can be achieved through greater and greater commitment to technology. It works like magic, and boy, have we patented it. <laughs> How much revenue did Facebook earn from the user engagement that resulted from foreign propaganda? What we do know is that the IRA, the Internet Research Agency, the, the Russian firm, ran about $100,000 worth of ads. Some people are laughing, some people are videotaping. I just threw something on fire, Chris, a firecracker. Something's on fire! We need to close the doors of the Capitol! It's 2023, and the technology we have is nothing short of magic. 8K television, the sum of all human knowledge in our pockets. Affordable virtual reality. First, there was the industrial revolution. Then, the digital revolution. And now, we've entered the AI revolution. They promised technology would improve our lives, make things easier, make us happier. But let's seriously consider that for a second. Has technology actually helped us achieve self-actualization? With all the technological marvels we encounter every day, why aren't we all fulfilled? Why aren't we all fucking enlightened? What if the promise of technological progress has actually stifled us? What if technology, instead of nourishing our souls, has been enslaving us in a dopamine-fueled, masturbatory hellscape? And then there's the usual suspects. Social media, reality TV, smartphones. But it's more than that. It's noise. It's the constant, unending ejaculation of information that's being cream-pied into our brains every day. Bullshit that shouldn't concern us. Nonsense that has no impact on our lives, and it's all monetized. Every day, people are profiting off our outrage. We pretend it's our civic duty to know about every fucking tragedy, every microaggression, every controversial viewpoint, every sensationalist piece of coverage that's being clipped out of context and exaggerated, and it's killing us. Technology was supposed to set us free. It was supposed to save us time so we could pursue happiness. Yet somehow, despite centuries of technological progress, we're busier than ever. Anger and anxiety are through the roof, despite this being the best time to be alive in human history ever. The prophets said TV would rot our brains. They believed the internet would corrupt us. They insisted that social media would ruin our social lives. And they were right about all of it. With each incremental innovation came an almost imperceptible loss of our autonomy. And this, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our democracy. democracy. Mass media tells us what to think. Mobile devices, video games, and streaming services all promise to eliminate boredom. But what no one told us is that creativity thrives in boredom. Those quiet moments when you have nothing but your thoughts, no stimulation, no memes, no Netflix shows, no podcasts, no pornography, that's where your mind starts to make connections. That's where ideas are born, not in the chatter, but in the stillness. Our culture has convinced us that silence is bad. Silence must be filled with dialogue, music, and outrage. But if you're never alone with your thoughts, then you're not really a person anymore. What are we then? Consumers. Right. If you never silence the noise, then you're just an NPC binging on a cacophony of garbage. So what do we do? Do we reject technology and move into the woods? Do we revert to a pre-industrial way of life? Even if we wanted to, most of us wouldn't. We are too deep into this global experiment to turn around and flat out reject it. But what if, instead of totally rejecting technology, we change our relationship to it? What if we got hyper-intentional about every piece of technology that we allowed into our lives? If we want to become self-actualized, we have to be in control, and right now, technology is in control because we've let other people make the decisions for us. Consider this, the smartphone. If you're a living human today, you probably have one. But think about it. Did you really decide to get a smartphone? Probably not. It's the default. Everyone has one. It's normal. Most phone stores only sell smartphones now. The decision was already made for you and you never questioned it. How many things do we accept just because they're the default? We need to question everything. Eliminate what doesn't serve us and double down on what does. And once you do that, your relationship to technology will dramatically change. Everyone should um, be uh, sensitive to certain questions. Uh, for example, when a new confronted with a new technology, whether it's a cellular phone or uh, high definition television or uh, cyberspace or internet, one question should be, what is the problem 
to which this technology is a solution. And the second question would be, whose problem is it actually? And the third question would be, if there is a legitimate problem here that is solved by the technology, what other problems will be created by my using this technology. As we exit the digital revolution and sprint full force into the AI revolution, it's essential, now more than ever, that we forge our own futures. Will we force technology to assist us on our paths to self-actualization? Or will we let it devour us and turn us into zombies? If we don't make that choice, then someone else will make it for us. There's a future within our reach where each of us has more freedom, more autonomy, and more fulfillment. But there's no one looking out for us. Nobody's there to catch us. It's time to regain control. It's time to reject society's defaults and decide for ourselves who we're gonna be.